I'm moved by the people who've spoken here today. But I want to see if I can move you a little bit too. Because I'm an American. I'm an international lawyer. I speak four languages. I'm not a xenophobe. I like people from other countries. I've been in this town a long time and elsewhere as well. And I think back to what I learned in history, what I learned about our Declaration of Independence, and I'm paraphrasing. When in the course of human events, the sovereign fails to take into account the grievances of the people, the people have a God-given duty to alter, amend, or remove their form of government and install a new form of government, responsive to the people, which will further freedom and liberty. The Persian people are doing just that today, and I've gotten to know many of them here in Washington, D.C., in Los Angeles, where I also spend a lot of time, and throughout the country. I previously represented Cubans in Miami when I was down there, and later tried to represent them running for the U.S. Senate. But I can tell you, this is the American spirit. This is what the United States is all about. This is how we became a country in 1776 and thereafter. And for the United States to turn a blind eye, as the Obama administration has done, and to pretend that freedom does not matter, that liberty does not matter, perhaps because we have a president who identifies with that regime. Many people in this country believe that this president identifies with people who are not even involved in this particular struggle, suggesting that he has abandoned the hope of free people. This president, Barack Obama, if he had been the president of France or the king of France back in 1776, would not have come to the assistance of the United States. We would not be a country today if France had not helped us gain our independence and gain our freedom. We didn't have a navy. Not too far from here at Yorktown, it was the French navy that defeated the British navy and played a significant role in our victory in becoming a new nation. Yes, and when in the course of human events the sovereign fails to take into account the grievances of the people, and in Iran it's more than failing to take into the account the grievances of the people, we have a group there of mullahs, of radical Islamic mullahs and others who are imprisoning, torturing, and murdering their citizens. It is in effect a modern-day neo-Nazi regime. They have threatened to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. They hate Christians and Jews. As we heard from many of the speakers here today, it's a worldwide effort to have radical Islamic domination over this planet, and they will not stop until it happens. But I saw a situation here on a human level which is related to the quest for freedom in Iran. I have a client at Voice of America. I actually have four of them. Some of them are even sitting here in this room here today. To protect them, I won't identify who they are because it's become very controversial. But my initial client was someone by the name of Elham Sataki. I want to show you a picture of Elham. She fled Iran at a young age of 11. Her family had served in the Shah's government. They attempted to overthrow Ayatollah Khomeini when he came into power. Half of them, approximately, were executed. She and her family fled to Sweden. She later decided to emigrate to the United States and became a proud American citizen and a broadcaster with Persian networks in Los Angeles, which is the biggest Persian community outside of Tehran. An opportunity opened up just three years ago to come to Voice of America in Washington, D.C., the Persian News Network. It was a dream come true. She could further the quest for Persian freedom in the honor of her family that died valiantly for the same ideals that we died in our revolution and continue to die today in defending freedom. When she got there, she found hostility towards her political views and the views of her colleagues. She found this individual, Fayed Ali Sajadi, the son of a mullah, 
And it's not a crime to be a son of a mullah, but it is a crime in effect to be broadcasting material which is anti-American. And it goes far beyond not mentioning NADA, who died in quest for freedom during the student revolts a year and a half ago. You have people going on that network who are trashing the United States, who are knocking the Iranian holiday of Nowruz, saying it's an illegitimate holiday, that we should only celebrate Ramadan and other Muslim holidays. And individuals who go on that air, and recently been talking about the Ground Zero Mosque and the Mullah, they broadcast a program which supports what's going on. They put the Mullah on, make the United States look bad as if we're some blind religious bigots, to use the phrase that's been used against Vinnie and I and others, and then state that really the mosque is simply a food court. This is being published on VOA all over the world. It's worse than a bad joke. Ellie Sataki was sexually harassed by her co-anchor, a guy named Mehdi Falahati. And rather than coming to her defense, Ali Sajidi used it as an opportunity to destroy her because she is viewed as someone who comes from a family that worked with the Shah. The use of the word Shah, by the way, is prohibited at VOA. It's like he doesn't even exist in Iranian history. And a lot of things that the Shah did, and I'll tell you from a personal perspective, were positive. He didn't believe in religious discrimination, all faiths, and I'm of, of origin a Jewish faith, I became a Christian. Even Jews could worship in Iran. There were women's rights. Women weren't tortured, raped, and murdered during the time of the Shah. And homosexuals were not also hung because they were homosexual and other peoples who the regime disagrees with under Sharia law. So Eli Sajidi saw Ms. Sataki as part of that whole inimicable view of what Iran should be and piled on and destroyed her. And she had a nervous breakdown. She sought help. She lives in Los Angeles. And VOA management would not even let her return to work in Los Angeles during her period of rehabilitation. They wanted to destroy her, not just because of her, but to send a message to all those other valiant Persian broadcasters at VOA that want to do their job, that want to further freedom, that want to see liberty, that believe in the mission of VOA. And we have VOA here today, and I suspect that the people that are here, although they can't say so, agree with what I'm saying. These are valiant people who believe in what the United States believes in and believes in what we stand for. And Elham Sataki and my other clients who were retaliated against, some of them came forward on her behalf and confirmed the sexual harassment and confirmed the retaliation. They were retaliated against too. So I represent them as well. Their grievances were not heard, not even by the U.S. courts, not even by Congress. Well, I'm here to make sure that these kinds of things change. Because in this country, if we can't stand for our own values, then how can we defend the values that we hold dear internationally? And I call upon the Persian people, the brave Persian people who I've come to love over the course of the last year and a half in particular, to stand up and to reach out to not stay within your community, but to get out into the rest of the world and explain how you are the modern day Holocaust and how your future is tied to the future of the United States. Because without freedom in Iran, if we can eliminate the regime, if that regime can be removed, and we're not far away from doing that, then you eliminate the threat of nuclear weapons to the United States and Israel it changes the whole balance of power in the Middle East, Iran, which is not radical Arab, but instead Persian, a separate civilization, naturally becomes an ally of Israel and the United States and the West. And our leaders, whether they're Republican or Democrat, have failed to understand that. Instead, and in particular this latest leader, Barack Obama, prefers to go on a political jihad promoting Islam throughout the world rather than supporting people in Iran 
who actually have broken away from the faith because they've seen how radical Islam works. Their families have been decimated and destroyed. And I'm going to close by saying that recently I saw a documentary about the Pope and how Poland became free and how because of his efforts in uniting the people, their faith in God, he was able to get them to have the courage to stand up to fight. The Persian people have broken away from Islam primarily. They need to find faith. They need to have a greater sense of God. And I'm not a reverend, and I'm not seeking to be a missionary here today. But I call upon the Persian people to find that faith, because that is the strength that you'll need, in addition to the support from the United States, to take on the tyrants in Tehran. And there was one other thing that occurred during the Polish experience, which is very important, and was pointed out in this documentary as well. So the Polish people knew that when something happened to them, if there was an atrocity that occurred, that there would be somebody outside of Poland that would speak out for them. The Pope, then Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher. This gave them the strength to do what they needed to do. If we're going to avoid a military intervention in Iran, which would cost a lot of lives, not just American, not just European, not just Israeli, but Persian lives, we need to embolden the Persian people to do it for themselves. So I call upon everyone in this room here today and anyone who sees the broadcast of this event here today, and I thank all of our speakers, to reach out, to communicate worldwide that the fate of the Persian people is tied to the fate of the United States. It's not just a question of nuclear weapons. It's a question of honoring our proud heritage. And we must stand with the Persian people, just like King Louis XIV stood with the United States, the colonies, in 1776. If we do not do that, we forsake our proud American heritage. Thank you, and God bless you all. That concludes our conference. We have five minutes to ask questions of anybody that's here. Uh, feel free to do so. We're speechless. Thank you.